Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Desert Eagle 3 by Feiyu model. Looks like these guys have a green one and a red one. I'm not sure what color I have, but we'll find that out in just a second. This is going to be a full review, unbox, inspection, setup, uh, drive test, bash test, see if we can break anything, and then we'll do a pros and cons afterwards like I normally do, just to see how well this thing performed. But it's looking pretty good so far. Um, it kind of reminds me of, I did a review on the A-Cross. And the A-Cross was very similar in design. It may just be almost exactly the same. So flipping over to the top of the box, we kind of see the layout here. We've got nice rubber tires. We have our uh, rear our front suspension actually is like this cantilevered suspension here and then the rear suspension is just your standard shocks. Uh, these are aluminum shocks. I'm not sure if they're uh, oil filled, but we'll definitely be checking that out. It's looking pretty good so far. It gives us a breakdown of the entire truck here in some pictures showing us we have a steel differential, all metal differential. This is a full four wheel drive vehicle so we're going to be able to bash this and get through some tough stuff so without further ado oh this is also 112 scale you can see on the box four-wheel drive 112 12 scale so if you're wondering on the size anyway without further ado let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box lifting off the top and i got the red version cool anyway there's the truck nice looking truck it's got an red anodized kind of chrome uh, I'm not sure if that's anodizing or that's just like a chrome paint on the plastic it looks like. Looks pretty good though. Right off the bat, the shocks don't look like they're full aluminum. They look like they just have aluminum um, tops, bottoms, and adjusters. But they do look like they're a plastic body. It looks like we do have foam in these nice soft rubber tires. There's a closer look at the chromed rim there. So it is a real beadlock rim with a chrome beadlock and then the inside is like an aluminum looking paint. A real tire on the back. And these are not oil filled. I can already tell, you see how it's pretty bouncy. So just like the A-Cross I reviewed uh, previously a while back, no oil in these shocks. You may be able to put oil or at least upgrade the shocks to oil shocks and or put in O-rings. I've heard that you can put in O-rings to these types of shocks to make them capable of holding oil. Anyway, rest of the stuff in the box. There's this white box here. And let's just see what's inside of it. Looks like that's the controller and the charger. A nice US plug. Since I am in the US, I don't have to have any adapter for this one. There's a 2S balance on the, the end of that plug there. Here's the controller. It's feeling kind of hefty because it's got batteries in it. So they must have tested it maybe before they sent it because it does have batteries in there. I'll probably just put in, put in some new batteries anyway just so we can get our full range test just in case these are a little bit low on energy. We have an adjustment for our throttle here, a 50-50 and a 70-30 adjustment. There's our power on, power off, steering trim, throttle trim, and then this is going to be the servo reversing up top, this switch here. And that looks like that's just about it. Well, this is cool though. Look at this. So we have on one side for the right-handed person that likes to steer, we have a foam wheel here. If you're left-handed, switch this thing around, push it in, and look at that. The wheel actually pushes through both ways. So if you're left-handed, you still have the ability to drive like this, even though the knobs are going to be on that side. But a good option nonetheless. I think really the only other thing in the box is going to be the instruction manual. And that's kind of tucked away all the way down here at the bottom of the box. And in the instruction manual, they're actually giving us some tools. So that's cool. So look at this. So we have a, um, a wrench, an open-ended wrench with different sizes on it for taking off and on the wheels. Two different sizes of hex wrench here. And then we actually have two different size pinion gears so we can change the gearing and two extra body clips. And then there's also a little grub screw in there. Um, in case you lose yours to put on the pinion gears. So I'm glad they're, um, you know, going through all those options. Here's all the parts if you want to go ahead and buy some replacement parts. But if it's anything like the A-Cross I previously reviewed, this thing's going to be nice and, uh, and strong. The A-Cross, I really bashed it and that thing held up great. I think the only thing that happened to that one was one of these little light caps came off. 
And it looks like in this one, unfortunately, there is no electric kit in it. Um, you can probably get that separate, but I'm looking in the um, little lights here and they're just hollow. They're just holes, so there's no LED lights in these as it stands. We can flip it around and you can see that there's no there's no wires um, going in there. So we're going to have to put in our own lights if we want to on this model. But the truck is looking really good. Look at this thing. The Lexan body is protected with all this film, so that's great. So if you want to really have a nice glossy look, make sure you go ahead and take off all this film uh, before you go ahead and run it. Or just leave it on, you know, give it a little bit more protection. It is already pretty glossy. So pretty nice looking. I'm just looking at it from the side. We have a nice high profile wheel here, really soft but nice and foam filled air tire. Um, looking at the side, it's nice styling. We have a roll cage here, it's all plastic. Feels very durable. There's the rear shocks. Again, these are not oil filled, so you can see how springy these things are. So I'd really recommend looking into like an oil filled option for this. Of course, you can just replace the whole shocks, like I said before, or um, put some O-rings in there and make them oil filled because that will really, really uh, lessen the bounce. And I'm gonna give you an example of that right now on two different trucks. So here's a truck with no oil fill shocks and you can see how it'll bounce. I'm gonna drop it. See that bouncing? Now here's a truck that I just recently am reviewing and this is called the Dune Thunder and this one comes with oil filled shocks. So watch how we drop this one, what it does. You see how it just soaks everything up and just sticks to the ground? So that's the difference between oil filled and non-oil filled shocks so really if you can get some oil filled shocks and you'll have much better handling anyway regardless uh, let's go ahead and get further in depth into this thing we kind of saw the whole top here so all plastic on the a arms and the suspension here as far as all the rods go plastic drive shaft going to the rear as well so you know 7.4 volt this shouldn't be twisting but we'll definitely be putting it through uh, the bash test and torque test to see if we can really break anything. You can see the articulation is really good on this one. All these rock racing buggies have really good articulation. You can see here, let's get it at a different angle so you can really see this. So you see that articulation, look how high that rear wheel goes up. And there's the front wheel. So it's looking really good so far. The bottom is really nicely laid out, nice and smooth, very minimal stuff to catch on. The axle is gonna be all metal parts, so you can't see it, this is a plastic casing, but within there is all metal gears and metal shafts internally. The front is actually plastic and a metal combo, so if we look more into the front A-arm here, you can see that it does have this metal piece right here. The out drive is metal, and then it goes into like a plastic hub and then also, this is also plastic out drive on top. So apparently maybe they were having some twisting issues once in a while, so they changed that one to metal, so that's interesting. Looking up close at the drive links, you can see how they give it that enormous amount of articulation. It does have pretty good side-to-side -side stability because it's got these little links up top here too. And these are flexy too, it doesn't feel like anything's gonna snap or break. So like all these similar kind of um, rock racers, you do have quite a few screws to undo to take off the body if you wanted to. So you have like two on the, each side, and then you've got um, one in the front, two on the top, and maybe a few more that I'm not seeing. So I probably won't be taking this thing off right now. Maybe I'm just gonna try to squeeze in and look underneath everything. There's the shocks in the front, those cantilever suspension shocks. So it's just kind of a latch lock battery holder with a um, body clip here and we're pulling out the battery it's a fairly small battery you can see how small it is it's a 1500 milliamp hour 7.4 volt lithium ion so it looks like you could probably fit you know maybe an 1800 in here or a little bigger even if you wanted to upgrade upgrade the battery as far as plugging in it looks like we just have a Dean's connector connection and just plug in and then of course you can tuck this away wherever you want to hide it. I'm just gonna tuck it in just like that. Looks like a good spot. So using the wrench they provide, let's go ahead and take off one of these wheels and just see if this thing has bearings or not. It looked like it might have bearings from the inside of the wheel when I looked at it. But just to make sure, let's go ahead and take this off. I'm really liking that they give us a little wrench to do all this. So there's the inside of our wheel. Looks like we have a hex inside there. And that's all plastic and it rides on an actual 
this looks like metal so that's great so it's a metal hex hub here with a little steel pin so this is pretty heavy actually I'm feeling this in my hand and it's you know it's a heavy little cast iron um, hex hub and sure enough yeah so there is a bearing in there so you can see if I kind of zoom in here and focus on it you can see that that is a ball bearing right in there and that's great any kind of truck like this it's always a bonus to have ball bearings because you're gonna get less resistance and you'll have more battery life and more fun screwing these back on it feels like they did kind of tighten them down a little bit too much from the factory so that's a big um, power and speed eater if these are cranked down way too tight then you're getting too much resistance and your wheel isn't able to spin freely freely so go ahead and maybe back these off just a little bit just to give your bearing a little bit more uh, freedom to spin which will translate to way less stress on the motor and the battery and also uh, more run times and just smoother operation in general Another good way to check if your wheel nuts are too tight, and this is kind of a rule of thumb through all um, car RC vehicles, especially with bearings, is to just turn it upside down and give it a little quick little shake um, forward and back. And if you can kind of see the wheels kind of, you know, turning a little bit on their own just from gravity, then you know that there's not really any binding going on uh, with the bearings and stuff, so you're in good shape. Anyway, really excited to drive this thing outside in our bash test, but let me just turn it on really quick since it already has batteries in the controller and there should be some charge in this battery before I charge it up. Let's just turn it on and go ahead and see how it performs. There we go. So as soon as you plug it in, it looks like there's no switch. There's no power on switch. So when you do plug the battery into this one, it's powered up. All you have to do is turn on your controller. And there we go. So a pretty quick and high torque servo it looks like. You can see how good that is and there's our throttle cool guys let's see how much torque we got the hand test cool good amount of torque you see when i give it full throttle it is going ahead and the nurse the inertia is trying to pull it out of my hand so looks like it's going to be pretty powerful with that 7.4 volt power so let's go ahead and get this thing out and do some bashing driving see how it is and then do our pros and cons all right guys let's see how this fy03 feiyu works. I'm going to go ahead and do a bash here in the neighborhood. Um, we got some rocks over there, got some grass, got some curbs, got pavement, and some little jumps and stuff. And let's see how this thing does. There's no oil in these shocks, so it's going to be kind of bouncy. All right, I got everything on, and the first thing we want to do is um, trim out the steering. So we'll go ahead and drive in a straight line and see if the steering is on. If not, we can do steering trim here. So I'm going to drive straight forward, a little to the left, and trim it just a little to the left. Wow, so that was full speed actually. Let's make sure this is trimmed out before we get going. That looks good, that's a straight line. Cool, so let's do some uh, high speed full throttle runs, see what the full throttle is and all the handling and some jumps and stuff. All right, so first off, full throttle. So just idling to full throttle now. So this is 7.4 volts, so it feels like it's almost gonna do a wheelie, but not quite. It just doesn't have the torque to do a wheelie. You can see again from uh, idle to full throttle now. Pulls up just a little bit. The braking is good. Let me come full throttle in and then do a full brake. Full brake now. Braking is actually really good. And then of course, once you brake, whoops, that time it went into reverse. It almost feels like it's gonna go into reverse if you don't reach a certain speed. Reverse, of course, is just full all the way back. So it seems like once it's slow enough, see how it just goes into straight reverse. Let's try to do um, reverse to full throttle forward. Wow, so you can do that. So just be careful with that. That's notorious for stripping gears, but you know, this thing may hold up. So here's a full throttle turn. You can see how the front right wheel is lifting up. Seems like the wheels though, they're not quite sticky enough to flip it. So that's good. They're sliding around a little bit on the pavement, almost flipped there. So if you're going fast enough, you will flip just like that. But so far so good. Let's kind of do some real bashing now. 
see how it is uh, trying to get up a curb. So as I expected, not quite able to get up a curb. Let's see if we go kind of at an angle. Almost, it can almost get there, but not quite. These tires are just too small. So let's do some uh, high speed runs here. And then we'll go into the rocks. Yeah, so it reminds me, it's like just like the A-Cross. Whoa. So you get going too fast and you turn, you're gonna have a little bit of too much, too much drift and roll on the chassis and it will flip. That's full speed there. Let's try a full speed run coming right at us. Full throttle. Woo! Yeah, fast enough. Great for somebody beginning into RC or that just wants to have fun. The look of this thing is really awesome. These rock racers really have a cool look. The A-Cross is a green one. This is red and this is, it just has this really nice look to it. So let's try a little bit of slow crawling here. Wow, so it's definitely possible to do a little bit of slow crawling. If you wanted to. But this thing is meant to be going fast in the rocks. You can see how it just soaks up everything. Of course, there's no oil-filled shocks, but you know, it's doing really good for having no oil-filled shocks. It's got the torque to just get through everything and over everything. Let's try to negotiate. These are some big rocks here. Let's see if we can negotiate them. That's where it's gonna kinda high center. So not meant to be really a crawler, slow crawler, because you don't have that low end crawl torque. But look at that, it's almost, yeah. It can, it can do it. it starts to hang up a little bit on the pumpkin and the differential. So rock racer, not a rock crawler, but you can crawl a little bit. That's what it's meant to do, you see that jump? I'll come over here and then just go full throttle. <laughs> nice, oh. Yeah, this is a fun truck. Whew. Coming through at an angle. Nice. Definitely gonna be seeing the durability of this in this test. You see how you just give it full throttle right at the end there and it just launches. Nice. A little bouncy without the oil-filled shocks, but man, it can definitely go, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> can't quite get up that. Let's go over here to this jump on this side. This is a big kind of a wall of rocks. This one's actually kind of fun to jump. Let's see if this one can do it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Nice. Come in at the right angle. Yeah. Yep, definitely capable. Woo, nothing broken yet and I'm just kind of holding it everywhere. Really good at braking on this one. Yeah. Loads of fun. Yeah, so just like the A-Cross, this thing is getting through everything I throw at it. We'll do some jumps here in a sec, some bigger jumps. Just want to give it a good beating in these rocks. Oh, all right. Okay, that's what happened to the A-Cross too, as you see how the light guard flew off. I'm um, not sure where that flew off. But anyway, you see that little light guard there? So, oh, one up top did fly off as well. So maybe glue those on. I'm gonna go look for them afterwards, but um, little con there, just glue those on. It's meant to be putting LED lights in there so you can move, we can take them off. But I would definitely glue those on. Oh, this, it seems to be staying on its feet pretty well. Nice. Yep, can't quite get over that curb. Oh, there we go. Ah, hit it at some speed and you can get over a curb. Give it that little rock. 
See that? Whew. No, no strippage on the uh, differentials yet. Ooh. Ow. <laughs> Let's do a little uh, damage assessment real quick because that sounded pretty bad when I nailed that rock right there. Let's just have a little look-see. Nothing is broken on the steering because that's what I heard. I heard a little like burk on the front. Everything seems okay. Look at these. Steering rods are plastic, but they're flexible, so they're not going to break. Steering nuts, steering arms are all good. Yeah, nothing's nothing's broken at all. Everything looks good. No twisting on the um, the rear drive shaft. Axles all look good. Cool. Let's keep going. Okay, here's some grass here. Let's see if we can kind of jump this over here before the battery gets too low. We'll try to come up and go as fast as we can up here and jump it. Cool. So it's not super fast, but it can do some jumps if you're wanting to jump and you get some speed. Oh, flipped it. Ooh. See how it is over the curbs. So this is where we may see some, uh, you know, springy and hoppiness in it. Um, when you're hitting fast bumps like that, you see how springy it gets at speed. That's just because there's no oil in the shocks and it's going fast. There, see that? So if you had oil, it would just like, took, it would set down and not really bounce. Still very durable and handling its own really well so far. Ooh, okay, that was right on the lid, pretty hard. Good test there. Let's just keep hammering these rocks until the battery dies and see if we can break anything. Ooh, that went right into the right wheel pretty hard when it landed. Nothing's broken. Awesome. Oh. Again, guys, sorry this looks like I'm torturing this truck, but I like to do this just so you guys know how durable these trucks are. Oh, you know what we forgot to do is check the range. We do a couple more passes here. Ooh. Oh, nice. And let's go check the range real quick. So I'm gonna stand over here by my cars, right about here. I'm gonna go all the way down to the end of the street from this cul-de-sac. While I'm going left and right, I'm gonna have the controller, like chest height, back and forth, back and forth. Wow, still in full control, all the way to the stop sign. That's like two to 300 feet. Full throttle coming in. Oh, hit the curb at full throttle and it's still going. Full brake. And if you hold the brake, it will start going into reverse. Wow, so definitely durable. Nothing seems to be broken yet. Let's do a little damage assessment. It felt like it hit that curb pretty hard when I was coming down the street. Nope, everything's great. Wow. Okay, so range of, you know, two to 300 feet with no breakage in the parts. Let's just keep hammering it on these rocks. Okay, that was full throttle all the way and it didn't break or strip anything. Usually you want to let off when you're landing. Oh, man, it just wants to get over everything. <laughs> Did you see that? It pushed that rock over and then kept going. What a great truck. Oh. There 
Uh, so this thing is getting my bash test and surviving so far. Oh yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo! Now if that ain't a test for the axle and the drive line, I don't know what is. Wow, still fine, nothing stripped. Awesome. Nice. So this is actually a decent little crawler too. If you wanted to. Let's try this rock here. See that? Oh, <laughs> little endo. Oh. I'm just gonna run it until the battery dies. This should have a fail safe to kind of cut off. Oh. Another full into the curb bash test. Oh man, it can almost get up if you do that little hop. It can almost get up the curbs. Woo! This thing's great at jumping, even with no oil-filled shocks. Oh! Still going. trying to self-write it. Oh yeah, oh, okay, so you can actually self-write. Um, and what you do is you go hard in one direction, like this, turn the wheels away from the ground, and it does a circle, and then turn the wheels really hard the other way, and push forward, and it seems to self-write. That's cool. A little hint, hidden gem there, hidden tip. Seems like the tires are getting a little stickier now that I'm, you know, kind of wearing them in um, here on the road. <laughs> cool, so we're still going strong. It feels like I've been driving for like 10, 15 minutes around there. Um, battery feels a little weak but still very capable. Oh! <laughs> Pushing rocks out of the way. So I can't see anybody going wrong buying this thing. I think this is uh, just around like 80 or so dollars. I would love this if I was a kid. How durable it is. You know, again, it's not super fast, but when you're um, a younger kid, the speed isn't necessarily so important. Top speed and top torque. Oh, there's a little way to wheelie. <laughs> Give it throttle on when it jumps high. Battery's getting a little weaker. Nice. Just hammering it. Okay, now the battery's getting really weak. I'm full throttle now. I want to just see what happens if it, um, if we just keep going. If it will eventually die or if it will kill the battery. I hope it's not getting too low on voltage. But you know, I do these kind of tests so you guys know what happens. Oh, so it's really getting really slow and full throttle. Really hope it shuts off. That's full throttle, so it is getting very low on power. 
Yep, yeah, that looks like that might be it. Just can't go anymore. Full throttle. So I'm gonna kind of call it here, guys. Uh, I don't want to go any more and totally ruin the battery because it looks like it may not have like a a, a low voltage shut off. There it goes. That's shut it off. So it does have a low voltage shut off. That's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and do like a pros and cons on this guy real quick. Man, the tires got a lot more sticky on them since I did that pavement stuff. They're really sticky right now. And that's probably why it was flipping more once we wore the tires in. But so full pros and cons, you can see the durability. Let's do a durability check, see if anything's broken. We do have like some scuffing on the bottom, which is normal. Um, pretty hot down here. I can feel the motor got pretty hot, but you know, it's still touchable. Just some scuffing, nothing's broken, amazingly. After just smashing into those curbs, as hard as I was going, and those rocks. Let's take a double check on the drive shafts. Telescoping drive shafts, drive cups are all good. Nothing's twisted, nothing's broken. The main rear drive shaft, nothing's twisted, nothing's broken. Nothing's even loose. All the wheels are still on solid. Uh, suspension components, all still perfect working order. Uh, servo, still doing good. Everything's still awesome. Wow, guys, so super impressed, just like I was with the A-Cross. This one is definitely a contender, and any kind of child or kid's gonna have a load of fun with it. Only thing is we lost three uh, light protector screens, so one, two, three there. Um, that's a little bit of a con. So I'd recommend if you're if you want don't want those to come off maybe pop them off and then super glue them back on just so they don't ever fall off. I'm gonna have to look for those, see if I can find them. Anyway, great truck, not a huge amount of speed, but just a tank as far as durability goes, and it lasted a long time. I'll go ahead and have the battery um, drive time pop up on the screen here so you can see just exactly how long it lasted in the driving I was doing. And I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget I will have the links to this down in the description down there below the video and so you can check out the pricing and all the specs. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.